Uh, right now, I'm currently working with Electrum. Since it is not Google Chrome, uh, it is not working properly fine, right? Because I need to be in Chrome to get the second suite and it is working. Now the second suite, uh, it is working for Chrome. Okay, masters, let's imagine that you want to run your test the script only in Chrome or Firefox for different reasons. I don't know. I just want to give you the possibility of that. I'm going to explain you how you can achieve that. Uh, and also, if you have a test suite that you only want to get that executed in Firefox, you can do it as well. I'll give you the trick to do that in this video. And if you uh, watch it until the end, I'm going to explain you how you can uh, change the viewport and emulate, emulate uh, devices dimensions to test your script in different viewport sizes. Okay, so let's go ahead and and let's make our our test script over here. I'm going to create a new one under the end to end folder. And this is going to be called playground that uh, sci that js okay and here i'm gonna create a describe as always and this describe is going to have a title right let's call it demo and inside of this i need that callback function and well that's it then i'll be creating a before each hook i just want to visit something just to have a kind of functional <laughs> script right and i'll be performing a sci visit and I'll be visiting google.com, okay? Let me check if this works. I'll create a, an it over here. And this is gonna be a, a test that I only want to get this only executed when it is Chrome, okay? Let me show you this because this is a normal it, right? And if I perform a silo here, you're going to notice that um, I can lock something here. This is a test. Let me check if this is working and I'll be running the playground file. And well, it is currently looking for Chrome and it is logging the, the test body. However, if I change this to Edge, obviously it is going to work as well, right? You're going to see that it works perfectly fine and the it, well, is going to it's going to be executed without any kind of problem, okay? But now let's imagine that I want to, uh, well, uh, add that uh, constraint. So after the title, I'll need to add another parameter. Here we have, we can have some option and the options and the options that I want to use is the browser one. So I can do something like this. I only want to get this executed in, in the browser Chrome. So when I do this, you're going to see that now it is not working with Edge and the same for Firefox because it can only be executed in Google Chrome. OK, let me show you that it, it is not working in Firefox as well. But if I open Google Chrome, it is going to be working perfectly fine. Let me see. Yeah, it is working now, right? That's great, and, and it is logging the test. It is gonna work as well if if you add multiple hits, obviously, but let me just show you one more example. And instead of Chrome, I'll be using Firefox for some reason. Okay, there it is. Now I'll be opening my test runner, and you can see that Firefox is not executed, obviously, because the option that I have added over here is Firefox, and that's amazing, okay? Now, uh, well, let me show you that if I open Electron, uh, it is not, not executing anything because, well, we don't have a test for Electron. But now let's imagine that you want to have this uh, suite executed only in, in Chrome. You don't want to specify each it to be a uh, browser dependent. You want to have the suite dynamically uh, set, right? Or actually all the tests are, are inside of the suite only running on Chrome, for example. Okay. So I'm going to create a new describe under, under this describe to show you that. And now I'll be deleting the it's. I am only going to uh, have one. Okay. This is going to be the test number one, for example, and I'll be deleting the option here because I don't need it anymore. But now the describe needs the, the parameter that I set before in the it, right? Let me show you this. I can add the object notation here, specify the browser key, and then the, the browser value that it needs. So for example, I can specify Chrome. Now I'll be also creating a couple of more it's, okay? This is the number two and the number three. And you're going to notice that each of them is going to work under Chrome. Okay, let me show you that. 
Uh, right now, I'm currently working with Electrum. That's why the demo, the, the second suite, let me show you this, demo suite browser um, specific, okay? This is gonna be the second describe. And right now, since it is not Google Chrome, it is not working properly fine, right? Because I need to be in Chrome to get the second suite executed as expected. Let me show you that. <clears throat> okay, and it is working. Now the second suite, it is working for Chrome. If I change that to Firefox, you're gonna notice that it is not going to work. I just want to, well, make that clear. And you can see the demonstration over here. Let me show you that. Well, now I only have one test executed and it is in Firefox. And well, now that we have, uh, uh, well, we have covered the first part of the video, I want to show you the viewport part. So thank you very much. If you are watching until this part of the video, please subscribe and join the master's community. My name is John Media and I hope that you are, you are enjoying this, okay? Let's continue with the describe. Um, well, to review the viewports part, I, I want to, well, delete some it's and also I want to tell you that I'll be creating a Udemy course to uh, teach Cypress from the very scratch um, and I'll be using JavaScript or TypeScript. I'll try to develop the course in TypeScript but it doesn't mean that you need to master TypeScript. Um, I'll try to teach you the basics and some difference that you may encounter but you're gonna be fine if you are if you have basic knowledge in JavaScript that's the only requirement so if you want to be enrolled or if you want to have a, a receive a not notification when I release the course please just fill the form that you're gonna found in the description of this video and uh, well you are gonna receive a, a discount coupon probably in your email as soon as it is released okay so let's continue with the test um, now the demo that i the, the describe is going to be demo viewports okay demo viewports and i don't want to specify the browser anymore but now in the test number one i want to set uh, an example using viewport and presets okay and if i change the scilog to sci viewport you're gonna see that i can um well i'll try to use the the string notation here right and you're gonna see that i have a list of presets i can use ipad mini iphones uh, macbooks and samsung and, and so on i'll be using the ipad mini preset and also you're gonna see that if I pass a second parameter here as a string, I have the possibility to use landscape or portrait, okay? So let's imagine that I want to use a portrait mode and now we're gonna have a test emulating the viewport of an iPad mini. That's great, right? But this is not the only solution that we have. We can use this test number two to show another possibility. And instead of using viewport and presets, you can use the width and height of your, um, well, you can specify and customize that. Let me check if I am writing down height properly because I have problems with writing that word and, and I did it well. <laughs> That's great. And now instead of sending a couple of strings, I need to specify with numbers the width and the height that I want to, to, to have. So let's imagine that I want this particular size in my in, uh, emulated, right? So let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna open Firefox and you're gonna notice that at the end, let me just uh, let them finish because I want to show you the results, okay? In the test number one, where we specify the viewport of the iPad mini, you can see that now this viewport is this one over here, right? And probably this is the one for the portrait mode. And if you want to see the list of the presets and its, uh, and its width and heights, you can go ahead and check the Cypress official documentation and you're going to see if you can use any preset or not. It depends on you. But if you want to set another viewport like this one, you're going to see that this is going to work as well. This is the current uh, width and height and it is the same that the, than the one that we configured in the test a script right you can see that over here and it is emulating that perfectly fine so guys i hope that you enjoyed this please uh, hit the like button it is uh, a lot of help for this channel 
I hope that you can share this content with your friends and let me know if you have any kind of feedback or suggestion. As always, uh, and as I told you before, I'll, I'll be creating more examples and use cases in my Udemy course. So if you're interested in understanding and learn Cypress from scratch and some advanced scenarios as well, please just subscribe to the forum that I'll be sending, uh, that I'll be uh, leaving in the description of, the, of this video. And I hope that you, uh, well, can um, join the course as soon as it is released. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next one.